Hi, I'm Chris Thompson for Investor Intel, and we're back at PDAC 2023 today with Leo Power, who is the interim president and chairman of Search Minerals. How are you today, Leo? Great, thank you, Chris. Now, Search Minerals has an interesting rare earth project uh, in uh, Newfoundland and Labrador, uh, but had some exciting news today about uh, a grant from the government. Why don't you talk about that first? Sure. We're Minister Wilkinson announced today $5 million towards our demonstration plant, which we will um, have at SGS facilities in Lakefield, Ontario. And there's, it's a $9.3 million demonstration plant. Search will contribute $3.3 million. The Government of Canada, $5 million. And we've applied to other sources for the balance of $1 million. And we're doing this for three reasons. Number one, we need to test our direct extraction technology using a hydromet plant to uh, concentrate the rare earth materials. Number two, we'll secure the engineering data that we require to complete our bankable feasibility study by the end of 2024. And we'll also secure one ton of high purity rare earth oxide, rare earth uh, carbonate uh, that we'll send to the Saskatchewan Research Council for validation of separation into individual rare earth oxides. Now your project is in uh the Labrador or Newfoundland, uh, it's, it's in, on the Isle of the actual uh, deposit or resources are in, in, in Labrador. Uh, last year you put out a PEA uh, on that project, so maybe you can just talk a little bit about the PEA and, and, and your, the plans for uh, developing the site. Sure, well the PEA was released in July of 22. It confirmed we have two significant deposits, our flagship deposits called Deep Fox and Fox Trot. And it confirmed over 26 years, we can produce uh, using both open pit and underground. And our end production will be 1,437 tons a year of those four very valuable magnet rear earth oxides. So NDPR and the two heavies, TB and DY. And uh, we'll produce that for 26 years. So what is the importance of these uh, critical minerals in the EV space for wind turbines? Uh, and it, why is it getting so much traction here at the show? Sure, well number one, permanent magnets are the world's most efficient and highest strength magnets. And they're required, for example, in an electric vehicle for the traction motors that actually propel the electric vehicles. So a lot of people think about the need for critical minerals uh, for the batteries of electric vehicles, but these permanent magnets that provide the traction motors to provide the motion are equally important. And also they're used for um, in turbines, increasingly for robots. And so Dr. Sagawa, who was a brilliant, who is a brilliant Japanese scientist, received a Nobel Prize for developing the world's first permanent magnet. And I was at a presentation he gave last year, and he said we need to be aware that by 2050, his prediction is that we'll have 30 billion robots. And of course, they all require permanent magnets. And so there's huge demand for, for permanent magnets. And I just read somewhere this morning, in China today, you can buy an electric vehicle with a range of 1,000 kilometers and can charge in eight minutes. So I hear people dissing electric vehicles in North America. The technology is rapidly evolving. And what's not to like, a, what's not to like about an electric vehicle? I mean, charge in eight minutes when you get this newer charging technology and very minimal service, as you know. So huge demand for rear earth elements to produce permanent magnets. So what is uh, Search Minerals' plans for developing uh, you know, your deposits in, in Newfoundland? Well, we'll start with um, um, doing the mine and the primary concentration in Labrador. We'll produce a 3.5% product. Then we'll ship the concentrate down to a brownfield site on the island of Newfoundland. And there we will build a hydromet facility, which will produce a 56% pure product. And then separately, we will build a separation plant, and that will produce a, a pure um, individual rare earth oxides. And again, we'll produce the four in the money elements that are required for permanent magnets, so NDPR and DYTB. We're very fortunate in Labrador to have economic concentrations of four of those rare earth elements. And so that'll help feed the North American sort of green economy then? Well, it will. It will. I mean, Adamus Intelligence, a Canadian-based um, firm with ex deep expertise in rare earth elements, 
they say there'll be a shortage of NDPR of um, 68,000 tons by 2035. Search will produce 1,437 tons a year. So we'll satisfy just 2% of that demand in 2035. And so it'll take 48 mines the size of Deep Fox and Foxtrot to satisfy the projected demand. Now, I know from writing a big research report on your company, you have more than just those two deposits uh, for exploration. So what, what are your plans for looking at regionally for more uh, deposits? Well, we hope our Deep Fox and Foxtrot project, which we hope to get into production by the end of 26, first concentrate by the end of 26, we hope that'll serve as a catalyst to launch an entirely new industry in Newfoundland and Labrador. So we know we have at least two other significant deposits, uh, Fox Meadow and Fox Valley, but we have 20 other significant re-showings in our 63-kilometer long, 63 long belt. In addition to that, we have a very good um, land position northeast of Turchill Falls, about 110 kilometers, um, called the Red Wine District. And then there's massive potential in the rest of, in northern Labrador, strangely, for earth elements as well. So we're hoping to act as a catalyst to develop this industry. Well, that's great. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that investors will see a lot of news flow as you work towards your pre-feasibility for this year. And I thank you for your time today. Great, thank you.